Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on health span and bone health. Are you taking collagen for your bones and you're hoping that by supplementing with collagen that your bones are gonna get stronger? Well, you're not alone. A lot of people take collagen for their bone health in addition to other things like skin, hair, and nails. There are some websites that really sell these very specific types of collagens for people that uh, are concerned about their bone health. And I really wanted to look into this because they seemed a little fishy to me. So stick around because we're going to go through really the only research that's out there that I could find on collagen for bone health. And I'm talk a little bit about why maybe it's not as important as you think. So stick around. We'll figure out more together. All right, so first of all, why do people take collagen for bones? Well, collagen is actually part of the bone matrix. In fact, collagen makes up 90% of the bone matrix. You have to have collagen, specifically a certain type of collagen called type one collagen, in order to mineralize your bones. So if you didn't have collagen, you could never improve your bone mineral density. In addition, we are, of course, mostly worried about bone strength, not just bone mineral density, and without collagen, you're really not gonna have any bone strength. So collagen is critically important, and that's probably why a lot of people take collagen for bone health. But here's the thing. Collagen is not what's called essential, meaning that your body can make it on its own. You don't have to consume collagen in order to have collagen in your body. Your body can make it just fine as long as it has all the building blocks. But just like several other things that decrease predictably with age, collagen production decreases with age as well, which might be a part of the predictable decline of bone health over time. Now, before we jump on the bandwagon of just supplementing collagen, I think it would help us to understand a little bit about what the building blocks are. Because when you're supplementing collagen, the hope is that you're taking this big protein, you're putting it in your stomach, your body absorbs it, and then it goes to your bones. There are a lot of assumptions in there, and I think the biggest part of that is that it's a big protein to begin with, and it's most assuredly being broken down into very specific amino acids that then get reassimilated and made into bone, assuming that that's what happens. So you could also argue that if you just consume the building blocks of collagen, that you would be doing just as much good for your body as if you're consuming collagen. So what are those building blocks? Well, they're kind of divided in my head into two different categories. Some are non-essential and some are essential. And again, the non-essential ones are the ones that your body can make and the essential ones are the ones that your body cannot. So the non-essential amino acids are things like glycine, proline, hydroxyproline. You need these in large quantities when you're making collagen for your bones. The essential ones are things like methionine and lysine. These are two specific types of amino acids and vitamin C, which we know we can get pretty readily through fruits and vegetables. So where can you get methionine and lysine? These are found predominantly in animal products. So starting with meat and fish and then eggs and then dairy, and then you start to see a little bit in nuts and seeds and a very little bit in whole grains. Uh, now with lysine, for example, you actually will see a little bit more in things like quinoa and things like beans rather than whole grains. But again, the primary source is going to be meat, fish, dairy, and eggs. So despite all the hype around collagen, I could not find a lot of evidence to support its use. There was one study I found that was not funded by the supplement industry, and then one big study that was. We'll go through them both. So the first one is relatively old. It's from 1996, and it was a prospective study. Now, the reason why this study went forward is because it was actually a drug study. So they used a calcitonin arm. So calcitonin is a drug that can uh, be given either, either through injection or through a, a nasal spray and it can help improve bone mineral density and reduce fracture risk. So calcitonin works as a drug, and this is one of the studies that helped show that. They also had calcitonin plus a collagen arm, and the collagen arm used 10 grams of collagen hydrosylate, which is uh, not a collagen peptide, which is really commonly um, sold in the industry now, uh, but collagen hydrosylate is the, the full collagen molecule. And they did see some slight benefit in the collagen group over the uh, calcitonin alone group, but not significantly. And again, we don't really know, you know, was this a um, part of working with calcitonin? Was this part of the 
the process of the drug just working better because it had the building blocks and would this stand on its own? And we, we can't get that out of this study. So it maybe shows us a little bit of signal, but it doesn't really support the idea of using it by itself. All right, now this is a second study, which is from 2018. So this is a well-designed study, but like I said earlier, this was funded by the supplement industry. So now there's a particular company that sells a very specific type of bioactive uh, collagen. And so they funded this study and the authors of the study who said that they had um, no conflicts of interest as it's stated in the study, um, but they chose to use this particular type of collagen, which is proprietary to this company and I think one other company has it, but it's not globally available. So they use this specific type of collagen and I'll talk about the results, but the problem is, is that that then makes it difficult to say that this, these results are true for all collagens. Uh, and then it really kind of drives you towards that one specific type of collagen. Uh, but let's just go through the study. So this, like I said, it was a 2018 randomized control trial, double-blinded trial, so a well-designed study on 131 patients. There were two groups. One group got these, what they call specific collagen peptides, and the other group was a control group. Now the study went for 12 months, and in the end they looked at bone mineral density of the spine, of the femoral neck, and they got bone turnover markers. They used P1 and P for bone growth, and they used CTX for bone breakdown. I think this is a really, really well-designed study. I love this design. I love these endpoints. I think this is exactly what we should be looking at, if only we could also add reduction in fracture risk. Uh, but I'll take it for what it is. I think overall this is a really well-designed study. Let's look at the results. So when you look at the results in bone mineral density, the spine improved by about 4% and the hip by about 6%, which looks pretty good. But when you look at the absolute change, what that's saying is that's actually a change in T-score from a negative 2.4 on average to a negative 2.3 in the spine, um, and that change is even smaller in the hip. And so even though 4 and 6% sound pretty good, and you'd be happy with that if this was your process, really you're talking about a, a negligible change clinically in a T-score. Um, and so this is why if you look at the drug trials, you start seeing changes like 10%, 15%. Uh, that's really what is even questionably clinically significant then, uh, but that's what happens with T-score and it just has to do with the, the statistics around standard deviation and the numbers that you're dealing with. So I would say, yes, it did get better and yes, that's statistically significant. As far as P1 and P, the bone turnover marker for bone growth and CTX, the bone turnover mar marker for bone loss, they showed a statistically improved P1 and P in the collagen group and a reduction in CTX in the control group. So again, this is exactly what you want to see uh, from the effect of any intervention and this one specifically on collagen. So some of the challenges with this study is that it had a relatively high dropout rate, meaning that about a quarter of the people that started the trial didn't complete the trial. And so they run the statistics as if they all had finished the trial, but we don't know what happened to that other 20, 22% is exactly what it was. So we're missing some data and we're going to have to assume that those data would be consistent if we're going to uh, carry this forward uh, but ultimately the larger the dropout rate the more we can question what the results actually are but another thing to consider here is the absolute change in the bone turnover markers so p1 and p went on average from 33 to 37 and that's in micrograms per liter and that's not a huge change for me you know, I like to see when we're working on a patient, I want to see a P1 and P go from 30 to 100. You know, I want to see big changes in bone turnover. So yes, it's better. Is it significantly better? Statistically, yeah, but clinically, I don't, I don't think so. Same thing with CTX. Now they use different units than we do, but they went from 0.68 to 0.8 in the control group. Um, and so again, that's a, you know, that is a statistically significant change. But clinically, I don't think that that's as big of a change as I would want to see with uh, an intervention. And lastly, again, this study was funded by a supplement company, the company Jalita out of Germany, and they make the product Fortibone. So if you go on their website, they'll talk about research that supports the use of Fortibone, and they're talking about this study. My challenge with this is that they're using a proprietary form of collagen. I don't know that we should really consider this to be the once and done study on collagen. I would love to see this repeated by a third party, somebody that doesn't have financial interest in the product. 
Um, and then I would also love to see it repeated in something like a collagen peptide or a collagen tripeptide that you can get commercially, because ultimately we don't really know what those products are doing because this study isn't on those products. All right, sorry to interrupt this conversation on collagen, but if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. Most importantly, subscribe, because as long as you're subscribed, we can send you notifications and you'll get more content about bone health. If you know anybody that would be interested in this, please share this with them. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how we manage bone health and other tips and tricks that you can do on your own or work with your own care team, to implement, then look for our free masterclass in the description below. All right, so here's the conclusion about collagen. I think the collagen has benefits as a supplement. I take it, I put it in my protein smoothie. I think there is likely benefit for skin, hair, and nails. You can palpably see and feel the difference if you're, if you're taking a good quality product. The challenge for bones is we don't really know what's happening on the inside. I wouldn't say that we have enough evidence to say that it's a slam dunk, I would say there's signal there, seems like it's probably good, but if you're getting enough amino acids through your diet and your body can build the collagen on its own, I don't know that we necessarily need to spend the money on this. Now that said, it comes as a powder typically, it's easy to put into a smoothie. There's probably not a lot of downside other than it's just layered cost after cost when you start adding these things up. So this is, not something that we incorporate on a regular basis for our patients. However, a lot of our patients take it anyway uh, because they like how it makes other things feel. So I think there's not a lot of risk. There may not be a lot of benefit, but there may be some benefit. I would spend your time and money focusing on a good diet. I think that's probably gonna get you in a better place for a lot of other reasons than continuing to add supplement after supplement. And lastly, I'm not opposed to industry-funded research. I think industry-funded research is an important part of the model that helps gets us products. It helps us to learn what really is good because we can't rely on government funded or um, other types of funding, grant funding for research on, on everything that we wanna learn about. So industry funded research is okay. I just think that we need to take it for what it is. This is a, a potentially biased piece of research um, and I would love to see it repeated in a third party study um, outside of an industry funded model. Somebody that could take this information and say, hey, this is great, let's prove it. Um, and this is really true for research in general. If we find findings in a study then really the scientific model says, hey, that's great, but let's prove it again in a different center. Let's prove it again in another location. Let's change the variables a little bit and let's prove it again. Really, that is the scientific theory where we really need to have proven an intervention works the way that we think it's gonna work in multiple settings and with multiple variables crossed off before we should really be sure that it's doing what we think it's doing. So again, I'm not opposed to industry, industry funded research. I just think we need to understand what it is and take it for what it is um, and then make our decisions based off of that accordingly. All right, thanks for making it to the end of this video on collagen. Um, if you found this helpful, please subscribe, like, and sign up for notifications so we can let you know when we get new content out. If you know anybody that would benefit from this material, please share this with them so that they can continue to learn on their own bone health journey. And lastly, if you wanna learn more about how we do bone health, about how we manage patients, other tips and tricks that you can do on your own or with your own team, look for our free masterclass in the description below. And also, don't forget to leave comments below. I love the interaction, the back and forth. I love answering questions, helping to build and reinforce great topics and concepts within the Bell Health community. So leave me comments, leave us questions. We'll get to them as quickly as we can. Our team is working hard to create new material. So if you have ideas that you want us to do and you want us to, to make videos on, then please leave those below as well. Thanks so much.